Una colaboración multilateral por el derecho a la ciudad vivible, saludable y equitativa. Un aplauso para él, por favor. Gracias a todos. Yo soy el follow-up hitter from the baseball team to finish up for the day. And what I'm going to talk about is related to cycling, but I think you've heard enough about cycling itself, the value of cycling, why we do it, what is it, why it is good for our cities. But I've been invited to talk about, well, how do you make this change happen? And I'll give you a little bit of story about myself. Uh, I was a school teacher biology teacher in the high school in my town, Portland, Oregon. I rode my bicycle to work, but less than 1% of people in Portland, Oregon in 1990 rode their bicycles to work. It was very rare. We had no facilities, and we just did not see very many people on the road. I eventually, and I'll tell you the story of how this happened, uh, helped start a bicycle organization actually ran for office about 10 years later and served in the, the regional government. And today we have some places in Portland where over 10%, some places, neighborhoods, even over 20% of people ride their bikes to work. There are tens of thousands of people who ride their bicycles to work every day in our city. And it's growing constantly. I want to tell you a story of how we got there. And the story is really important. And it's a form that we've used for centuries, or thousands of years, humans tell stories to share what they care about, to share what they dream about, and it's a technique that's really important, at least I find it very important, for connecting an issue like bicycling. You know, less than 1% of people in Peru ride a bicycle. Why do they care? Well, you tell a story. And I'm going to tell a story about how the Bicycle Transportation Alliance of Oregon got started. And it was a man, it wasn't me actually, it was another man, he was a carpenter. And he lived on one side of Portland and worked over a mountain about 300 meters high. He worked on the other side. The first president, George Bush, decided to attack a country called Iraq the first time. And he, my friend Jim, he became my friend, I didn't know him to begin with, he became my friend though. He said, how can I make a difference? I think war is horrible. I don't want us to go to war. This war is about oil. It's about the United States trying to keep its oil coming to its country so we can burn it. We know how bad it is. He said, I'm going to start riding my bicycle to work. He started in the summer, though. It's beautiful in Portland in the summertime. And he'd ride his bicycle up over the mountain and go to work every day. It was not easy, but he got stronger and really found how great bicycling was. And then winter came. Winter in Portland, Oregon is dark. The days are very short because it's very far north. It rains a lot. And on the mountain, you actually get snow. And he was trying to ride his bike and said, forget it, I'm going to get killed doing this. Then he had this really amazing idea. He said, I know, I'll ride my bicycle to the bus stop, put my bike on the bus, and take the bus over the mountain and get off and go to my job. He tried to do that and they said, get off. And he tried to do it again. He said, get off, you're not allowed. And after three times, he called up the bus company, the managers, and said, you know, I want to just ride my bike and use the bus to get over this dangerous place. Why can't I do that? Every day, there's someone on that bus in a wheelchair. They're on the bus with a stroller with their children. Why can't I bring my bicycle? And what he heard was, it's against the rules. Nobody does it. In the whole country of the United States, no one lets a bicycle on a bus. And so he did what was a very smart thing, I thought. He called a friend up and said, I need help. I want to change this. But I'm a carpenter. I don't know the first thing about how to use a computer. This is 1990. The computers were pretty rare. I, I want to call a meeting. So would you help me make a poster, a flyer to put up around the city to invite other people to come to a meeting? And his friend said, sure, I'll do that. They made up an organization. They called it the Portland Area Bicycle Coalition. It was two people, was his organization. <laughs> two people. But they had a meeting, and ten people showed up. I was one of those ten people, because I was riding my bicycle to work, and I saw this poster that said, come to the meeting with the Portland Area Bicycle Coalition. Let's make a difference. I showed up. 
And to be honest, I thought myself that bikes on buses, I don't know what good that will do. I lived in the inner city. I could ride my bike everywhere. I never took a bus. So what important, how could this be useful? But Jim had a lot of passion. And he talked about why he was doing this for, that he wanted to help promote peace in the world. He wanted to do his piece of this, how he could make it better. And he said, I'm going to work on this. I need your help. Okay, there's a lesson there in that story. He needs help. We all need help to do things we want to do. But he also talked about why he wanted to do this. It's about peace, but it was also about having choices. It was about clean air, clean water. It was about the things people care about. And this went on, and he was actually, we did a very good job. We went out and got uh, signatures on petitions from about 7,000 citizens. We went to 24 cities and asked the city councils to sign a resolution that would support this. And we were able to persuade our transit agency, it's a government agency in America mostly, and we persuaded them to do a pilot program. They put a few bike racks on a couple bus lines, and they said, we'll see, but we think there's going to be lots of problems. Someone's going to steal the bicycles, they'll crash, people do things wrong. Well, a year later, they actually said, hey, no problems. We got more customers. We're going to do it on our, all our buses. And we're going to redesign the light rail trains so that it's easy to get bikes on and off. And strollers and people in wheelchairs and everyone else. And so we were able to have, from that carpenter's idea, was the first bus company in the United States to have 100% of their buses accessible to bicycles. Now the whole country of the United States, I would say almost every single bus company has bicycles allowed on the bus. They put a rack on the front, they can carry two bikes easily. And it's increased the usability of the bicycle, the usability of the bus system. And I'm not telling you a story about bikes, I could tell you a story about anyone else getting organized to make change happen in their community. But the key pieces here are talking about what do the values that people share. And here was Jim, the carpenter. What was he trying to do? He was trying to get to work so he could feed his family and take care of his family. He wanted to do something that was less impactful on the environment so our air and water would be cleaner by him doing this. He wanted to say, let's not burn so much oil so we don't have to go attack another country to take the oil. He talked about independence. He talked about the ability of us to do what, have choices on how we get around. These basic human values he was able to take something, bikes on buses. No one in the whole country of the United States had put bikes on the buses before. He had this crazy idea. This crazy idea became reality because of telling that story and making that connection about what we care about. Again, family, health, the environment, about choice. When I got elected as a Metro Counselor, one of our jobs is to do the planning for the land use and transportation for the city, the whole region of the Portland area. There are 25 cities in that area. Portland's the biggest, but there's 24 others. We, I looked at it, I come from an activist background. I want to promote bicycling, give people more choices, clean the air, give people a way, a more affordable way to get around. And I looked at, we spent $700 million a year in that area on transportation. And I wanted to spend it differently. So we went to ask the public. We asked them this question. We said, we are spending $700 million of your money every year. Are you getting what you want? And the people would look at us and go like, what? What do we want? We don't know. And so we had a conversation with the public and said, well, we spent all this money, but why? Why are we spending? What are you trying to, what would you like to get from this? And what was very interesting, and here's the interesting part of this story, is that we asked doctors, what should we spend money on in transportation? We asked business people, what should we spend money on? We asked poor Mexican immigrant laborers who live near the rural part of the region, what we should do to spend our money on? We asked poor African Americans, what should you spend your money on? We asked environmentalists, what we should spend your money on? And they said, we don't know what you should build, and, but they all said, you need to do things that make our economy stronger, that give people more choices, that increase the health, improve the health of our children, that keep the environment clean, and provide us choices on how we travel. 
every group had the same six outcomes that they cared about, the same six values. Taking care of your family, take, you, by having access to jobs, keeping them healthy, providing them a safe place to travel, getting choices, and protecting the environment. The key, one, this is one key, there's many things you need to do to be successful in social change, but the key one that I want to tell you today, and make sure you hear me, is that a, you need to tell your stories, and your stories need to be about the things that we share. Not, hey, I rode my bicycle to the top of the mountain, it was really cool, and my light broke with all my lights and everything else. No, it's, I want to get to work, or I want to get my children to go to school in a way that they are safe. I don't want to worry about my children dying on the way to school. I don't want to get killed when I'm riding my bicycle to work. Safety. I want to be healthy. I want my hair to be clean. I want to not spend so much money on transportation. So those are some key points I want to make about this. The importance of framing your, what you want in terms of those shared values and then using the story. It's about us. It's about our children. It's about your grandparents. It's about people. That's why government should respond. And that's why you have a moral high ground here to be able to say, we are trying to achieve something that improves everyone's lives for this generation and the next generation. <coughs> Let me tell you a story. Let me tell you how if we can put some bicycle lanes on the roadway, if we can control traffic so drivers respect pedestrians, we can make this a better place to live for us and our children. And here's how that happens. So I'm telling you the story because I think it's because I have great hair and I am an honorary ambassador of Sipo Villas Rendered Hivas and I've been a teacher, I've been an elected official, I've been an activist, but I've also been a parent. And I've also been a citizen in my community that, that says, I would like this to be a better place to live. I will work with you. I will collaborate with you to come up with some answers to these big problems we face. And I, I believe that's why I've been, I was asked to come and talk about how do you make change happen? I'm not a wise person. I'm just older. But I've had some experience in making change happen in my community and have found that this is the way you get there. Data is good. You should have some facts. So is doing some uh, political organizing and developing partnerships and such. But you need, I think, again, come back to why do we do this? And how we communicate that with our fellow citizens is telling the stories about what can be better, what we dream about, what we hope for, and what we hope for our children. So what I want to do is say thank you, because all of you in this room I know are working to make this world a better place. And I want you to be successful. I want Lima to be a place where I come back some year, I can ride my bicycle safely and enjoy it. And all the cities, whether it's in Bogota or in Lima or in Sao Paulo, the whole world would be better for us and our children if we could safely ride our bicycles. And everyone could ride a bicycle safely. So do that good work and Suerte a todos. Muchas gracias.